Matt Chapman to the Yankees. <laughs> that was my reaction. <laughs> There's a rumor. You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making us your first listen every day. I'm Stacey Gotsoulias. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers, join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. So bet $5, you win. Yay! Go to FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. With me, as always, is my producer, Steve Granato. Steve... It's another week. We're here. (laughs) Another week. We're getting closer. We're getting closer. Baseball right around the corner. Thanks for clicking on the show, guys. Uh, We want to do something a little different here today coming up later on in the show. Stacy and I have our big plans to fix baseball ranging from realistic to ludicrous. So we're going to be doing that (laughs) later on in the show. Of course, we also want to get you involved. So stick around to figure out how you could be a part of the show on Wednesday. That's coming up later on in the show. But Stacy, this this one hit uh, right before our episode released on Friday, our last episode. Here we go. Okay. Matt Chapman to the Yankees. That was my reaction. <laughs> There's a rumor. Tis the season. Not everyone signed. Here we are still. Mm. End of January. Not everybody signed. Still big free agents on the board. Here's the rumor. This is coming from Susan Slusser from the San Francisco Chronicle. Love Susan Slusser. Slusser, Great writer. Absolute all-timer. Saying six teams have expressed interest in Matt Chapman. Amongst them are the Giants, Blue Jays, Cubs, and the Yankees. Stacy, you kind of alluded to your reaction. Uh, It sounds like your reaction when you read that was mine as well. Yeah. Yeah, basically like WTF <laughs> and why? <laughs> like, why? What? Yeah, and, and I've seen a lot of uh, like the score wrote something about it, kind of reference to DJ LeMahieu, how it would be an upgrade over LeMahieu at third base. Uh, you can make the argument for that, of course. You can make sure. arguments in multiple directions. DJ LeMahieu is not a free agent until after 2026. Still a couple years left on that contract. He does have a limited no trade clause at this point, by the way. So it was a full no trade clause at the start of the contract. And at this stage, it is now a limited no trade clause. I don't know the full details of what that no trade clause entails, but Mm -hmm. limited means it's not everybody. So you can't just veto it straight up. There would be usually in this case is like a list of whatever, 10 teams or 15 teams. You'd be like, yeah, I'd be willing to go to these teams or even smaller. It could be like five or three. You know, it depends on what the agreed upon contract is. Um, Right now, DJ makes 15 million a year. Straight up. That's uh, it's a straight up annual average and just keeps rolling that way. So if you're looking at replacing DJ LeMahieu, that's what you're having to start at. Hmm. But uh, again, Stacey, I mean, just kind of the point, it, it's like, what? I, I, I thought the infield was set. I, I thought we still already had a log jam. Uh, and this is why the, uh, you know, the the Gio Urshela rumors were like, what are we talking about? And I was throwing a Matt Chapman into the mix. I mean, how, how much do you think this is real at this point? I was literally going to say the same thing. This feels like the Gio Urshela thing. Obviously, different player levels, but this it feels the same. Like, why and where would he go? And as you said, it felt like the infield was pretty much set. So why would you need to do this? I don't know. That's what my reaction was. Yeah, it would be one thing if you if we didn't have the Anthony Rizzo news. If the Anthony Rizzo news was opposite, in case you missed that, Rizzo has cleared concussion protocols and he's ready for spring training. So if it were the other way, then I'd be like, okay, now they're thinking LeMahieu at first. They're not feeling confident in Rizzo. End of the contract. This is his last year. We'll figure it out. That right. I would that I understand and going to get Matt Chapman there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I I look, I I feel this is personal feeling, no news tied to this or anything like that. So this is just my conjecture. I I venture that it's just a check-in. Yeah. That it's like uh look, we're gonna see what's on the free agent market like we always do. We're gonna check in, we're gonna call the agent, see what they're 
thinking? Are they interested? Is this an option? Because it never hurts to ask in any of these things. We've clearly talked about this a hundred times, Stace, but the Yankees are all in in 2024. So all in in 2024 means upgrading at third base, potentially like upgrading at every position. Like you're always looking to upgrade. Um, even if it seems like your team is set in stone, you're, you're not going to deny the opportunity. If Matt Chapman says, yeah, oh my gosh, I would love to come to the Yankees and I would love to take this insane one year deal. You go, okay, great. Let's <laughs> yeah. do that then. Like yeah. that, that's kind of where my head is leaning. I don't think it's like a, the Yankees are a straight up finalist and they're making a hard push at Matt Chapman. That's not the vibe I'm getting here. Right. No, that isn't the vibe. It's just kind of funny that it came out when it did and how it did. Um, but I agree with you in that sense that it's it doesn't seem like they're making a big push for Matt Chapman. It was just kind of like putting out feelers and seeing if, hey, maybe we could do this. Because as you said, I feel the same way. Um, it would definitely make more sense if something was going on with Rizzo, if something was going on with someone else where they could put DJ in a different position and then have Chapman be the everyday third baseman. Um, I mean, it wouldn't be a bad option to have as, you know, if the Yankees had some sort of hole that they needed to fix and, you know, Matt Chapman was like, sure, I'll go to the Yankees. Uh, hell yes. Sign me up. But right now. Yeah. Yeah. Especially because like it, it, another way I could see there would be some sort of potential here is if like the, the asking price on cease was lower or, you know, something in that regard where it's like now, you know, pick, pick. Marlins pitcher and insert him into trade talks. And the, now the asking price is Oswald Peraza and only Oswald Peraza. It's like, okay, well now we can kind of shift some things around, put LeMahieu more in a, in a, a DH role and off the bench role. And okay, now we're starting to feel around and now you have Chapman there, but it doesn't seem like there's any movement on any of these trades. It seems like the talks have completely stopped, at least from what we've read. We haven't heard anything in weeks on the trade front from the Yankees, uh, especially with the C stuff and any of the Marlins stuff. So doesn't seem right it just doesn't seem like there's uh, i wouldn't say uh there isn't a need there again right. it would be an upgrade of course it would but so would trading for shohei you know like uh, go, <laughs> what are we talking about go get acuna of course like duh <laughs> right. go get us yeah that would of course make your team better um <laughs> stacy we always start here when we talk about um you know anything offseason related MLB trade rumors still crushing it here with their projections uh by the way they had marcus stroman at two years 44 and uh, the Yankees signed him at two years, 37. Just throwing that out there. So where do they have Matt Chapman? Six years, 150, an average annual of 25 million a year. So I brought up the DJ thing being 15. So it'd be a $10 million more. And of course, at this stage, they'd be on the same team at the same time. And, you know, that's how it goes. Um, but it's still the Oswald of this whole thing, right? Like that's still where I'm at. It's like, I, I still see Oswald as a bench role here entering the season and the first call of any injury on the infield. Yeah. I feel the same way. Um, it's just interesting that their prediction for Matt Chapman, the six years, one fifty, is what the Yankees were rumored to offer Blake Snell. <laughs> that's true. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, man, I'm so ready for Snell to sign. I'm just like, can we just get this whole thing over with? Yeah, like really, um, we're getting, we're two weeks, three weeks away from real stuff happening. I know that pitchers and catchers is like just over two weeks from starting, but that's not real. Um, it's when they start actually playing games. So that's about a good three weeks away and we're getting close. I mean, that's going to be really fast. It's going to be interesting to see if um, anything starts happening as of February 1st, like we said last week, with some of the money being tied up in the Bally stuff, that maybe some teams will start throwing things at Blake Snell and finally get this over with. Yeah, that, the Bellinger, and then, of course, the Chapman are still the three big ones mm -hmm. on the market that you're just like, what's going on here? Uh, and as we have done all offseason timestamp, just in case it happens in the middle of this episode or by the time <laughs> you listen to this, 8.23 Eastern on Sunday, January 28th. There you go. Now you know, episode released the 29th. But yeah, it's it just doesn't make any sense, um, at least at this stage. If we knew somebody was hurt, it would make more sense. Uh, it, it would make a lot more sense if they were trying to ship Oswald out, if they were flirting with the idea of getting DJ traded, which what are you even getting back? You're going to have to eat most of that contract regardless. Like it just doesn't make a whole bunch of sense that they would realistically push for this. Chapman would be an upgrade. Clearly, I like him. Here's a quick little uh, aside. I went to school with him. We both went to Cal State Fullerton. He was a couple of years. Uh, he was like a year older than me. So, you know, I, I have a tie to Matt Chapman. I always liked Matt Chapman. I loved watching him in college. Like he was great. And he, he's a great ball player. 
So it clearly would be an upgrade, but I just don't see any realistic chance at this. Yeah, I think it would make it would have made more sense if DJ maybe his entire year was as bad as his first half and he didn't improve in the second half. Then maybe I would see something maybe. like, oh, all right, maybe. But even, but still, even then, yeah, you're still on contract. That's the difference. But yeah, uh, let us know how you're feeling about this here in the comment section on the YouTube side. Of course, while you're down there, you can leave a question for Fan Mail Friday that's coming up on Friday. Reply to that pinned comment here on our YouTube comments, and you'll have a chance to get on the show on Friday. As always, insiders have priority on that, and I want to hear from the insiders as well. Like, you saw this Chapman rumor. We didn't even text you about it because I was like, come on, man. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I want to hear what you guys have to say as well, so shoot us a text uh, on the Lockdown Yankees Insiders Club. You can text Stacy, you can text me, and you get a whole bunch of really cool perks as well with it, including fan mail priority. Check out a 14-day free trial in the episode description okay when we come back our grand plan to fix baseball it's still not too late to get started on your resolutions with factor so you're ready for the new year factors ready to eat meal delivery takes the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success in 2024 skip the grocery stores prep work and cooking fatigue instead get chef crafted dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door with over 35 meals to choose from per week including keto calorie smart vegan and veggie and more plus over 55 weekly add-ons you'll have a ton of nutritious and flavor flavorful options to kick start your resolutions Factors two-minute meals are your secret weapon in the new year. Fuel up fast with restaurant-quality meals, all delivered right to your door. They also offer snack options like breakfast, smoothies, snacks, juices to keep you going no matter what's on the schedule. They're flexible. You can change your order every week with plans from four to 18 meals per week, or you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Head to factormeals.com slash locked on MLB 50 and use code locked on MLB 50 to get 50% off. That's code locked on MLB 50 at factormeals.com slash locked on MLB 50 to get 50% off. Back now here on Locked On Yankees. Hey, everydayers, don't forget, we are still three times a week right now, changing very soon. Stay tuned for that. Uh, but, of course, uh, if you're looking for something on the days that we aren't on, you could always find Locked On Sports Today on YouTube. 24-7 streaming YouTube channel gives you the top stories, the top shows every day. I'm sure they're playing football stuff right now, uh, getting you ready for the Super Bowl here in, what, two weeks? Two, two weeks, weeks or something like that, right? Not a big football guy, but there you go. Um, okay, Stacy, our big plans. We got big plans. I got big plans, Arthur. Uh, I got a grand plan to fix Major League Baseball. I want to start this, Stacy, first by saying I think baseball's at a really good spot right now. We were kind of having a little bit of a hard time finding <laughs> things we wanted to fix, right? Like, yeah, I think baseball's in a pretty good state. Yeah. Um, yeah, most of our stuff that we're fixing doesn't have to do with in-game stuff because the in-game stuff, they're in a really good spot where it's, um, you know, all the stuff that you thought was going to be bad, not you, Steve, you audience, because Steve thought a lot of the stuff was going to be good and he told you it was going to be good last year and you would forget about the pitch clock and you forget about all this other stuff and he was right. Um, so it, it was kind of funny struggling to come up with things <laughs> to fix in-game because, yeah, it baseball's in a really good spot right now. Yeah, the competition on the field, there, there's you're always gonna be able to nitpick. You'll be able to nitpick at every single sport, things you don't like. But like in in reality, when I'm at the ballpark, I'm watching the game. I'm like, this is good, good yeah. baseball. I yeah. have fun, yeah. uh, Stacy. But we did have some things we wanted to change. Maybe some things we wanted to tweak. We each have three fixes, and we're gonna trade them off. So let's go ahead and start with your first one. I feel like it needs to be a little easier for fans to watch the game because of all the different streaming services but the problem with some of the streaming services is if you have mlb tv you can't watch the games if they're on that streaming service they kind of black you out from watching it and they don't show enough games on those streaming services to really make it worth it for someone who's watching the yankees it's more for someone who's watching baseball altogether so the kind of 
doesn't do a lot for the rabid one team fan. But if someone overall likes baseball, then sure, they'll, they'll get Peacock, want to wake up at you know 10 o'clock, get brunch ready, watch the 11 o'clock game. But I feel like they need to make it better for the people who have MLB TV if they don't live in a market and they can't watch certain things. And if for that to be blacked out is really wrong. Yeah, I mean, we are not saying anything that hasn't been said already. <laughs> Look, the state of sports and live TV streaming is a mess. Like, it just is a complete mess, top to bottom, start to finish. Uh, and again, we're not saying anything new. So, but I, I think, yeah, you, we're, we're on the right path here of like, this is one thing that we can kind of get in the right direction is making it easier for the people who have paid for it already yeah. uh, on the streaming side to also still be able to get it because we were talking about it off off the show. If you like I as you guys know, I live in California and if I'm trying to watch the Yankees and it's an Amazon Prime game through Yes Network with all the graphics, Michael Kay's on the call, all that stuff, Meredith's there, like I still can watch it through the MLB at bat app. But if the Yankees are on Peacock, I can't watch the Yankees through the MLB at bat app. So, yes, I'm not blacked out from Yankees games because I'm not in the New York area. It's a whole different problem when you're in the area and that's a whole can of worms. We know that's a problem. They know that's a problem. They're trying to fix it. It's a mess. It's a yeah. whole rights money and a lot of money, admittedly. Yeah. It's, it's not a simple fix. It's not just a flip of a switch, right? Right. So that's the problem. Um, Stacy, I wanted to stay on the TV side of things. I have a fix for the national booth. My One of my big issues, whenever it goes to a national game, Say the Yankees are on Sunday night. You don't get the 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 inside knowledge from the people who cover the team every single day. So my pitch to fix this is sure, have the national play-by-play -play person. That's fine. But say Yankees are playing Red Sox. ESPN goes, Hey Michael, we'd like for you to come do color. And then you call Boston. Hey, we'd like for you to come do color. So you have two color and the national TV play-by-play, -play, so you get both perspectives. Or you pull Meredith and whoever the Red Sox, Bally, whatever reporter, NBC re reporter or whatever it is, the on-field person. That way there's at least one perspective on either side and then the one down the middle, which is the national TV play-by-play -play person. So that's my proposed fix for the national booth on the, the national games. Hmm. Well, to be fair, they do have David Cohen on ESPN, but I don't know how yankee centric he is during the national games because i know they probably tell him to say certain things and i know he has some inside stuff um but i like that idea actually that would be uh pretty interesting or at least the option for it maybe you know like michael k's like dude i cover 100 and whatever of these i'm not coming to do this game. Like, i'm gonna <laughs> yeah. be in tampa like well, how about how about we make the game more about the game <laughs> On that the national too. broadcast. That's, that's a whole other can of worms, Stacey. Let's not get into that. Uh, what's your next one? I feel like, because of the whole uh, sticky stuff controversy from a few years ago, I think that pitchers should be allowed to have some sort of tackiness on the ball, maybe some sort of universal tackiness that they can all agree on. Because it's really not just for them to feel the ball. It's for them to protect the guys they're throwing the ball toward. Like, it's not just for them to gain an edge or do something like that. Um, I feel like it would be uh, helpful to have some sort of tackiness. I don't know how easy it would be to get all the pitchers to agree on one thing because some guys like certain things. But if there was a way that someone could come up with something for that to be, I think that would help. Yeah, because pine tar on the bat side, right? Pine tar, sticky spray. Mm -hmm. That's everyone. Everyone uses that with a little bit of rosin and stuff like that too. But yes, uh, I agree. It's just getting everyone to agree. That's a, that's a tough part. <laughs> um, Stacey, my next one is simple. 90 second limits on replay reviews. That's it. That's all there is. You get 90 seconds. As soon as that thing starts, boom, the pitch clock is counting down and the whole crowd is counting down like a shot clock. And you have to have your answer in by then. Or Regis Philbin comes out and says, you're not a millionaire. That's yeah. it. Like, that's what I want. Just 90 seconds. If you can't figure it out within 90 seconds, it's done. It's done. You, I'm sorry. Call stands. Yeah. Cause there have been instances where reviews have taken entirely too long. And some of them haven't even been complicated reviews. Um, there was a Yankee game this season where there was a review that was, I think it was like three and a half minutes. And it wasn't even that 
complicated of a call. And we were like, what is, <laughs> what is taking so long? So yeah, that would help. That would help a lot actually. And it could be fun for the fans too, if there was a countdown. <laughs> yeah. Keep us in, keep us interested. Uh, what's your last realistic fix? Okay. This might be, this might not be liked by everyone, but when COVID happened and they came up with the different rules to help with the games, the seven inning double header was fantastic. And I loved it. And I think they should bring it back. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Owners don't No, because it's single admission. Mm -hmm. That's the problem is they yep. want the money for both games. Oh, and sure. the other issue you do run into there is, Hey, this was a rain out. Isn't my ticket supposed to be good for this game when we make it up the next day? Oh, what are you got to kick me out because you also sold the seat for the next game, which was supposed to be today. <laughs> yeah, there is a little bit of a tickling ticketing yeah. problem there. Yeah, uh, but maybe they get first crack at redeeming tickets for the next that double header at a different seat of equal value or whatever. But yes, I I love seven inning doubles. It was great. Minor league baseball, seven inning double headers. Just yeah. saying. Um, Stacy, my last one. Uh, if you're an NBA fan, we are ending what they called Rivals Week. And I really thought it was cool. Yeah, I don't. I wasn't like something where I was like clamoring for, but I think the NBA does a good job with marketing their games. That I think baseball needs to do a better job of. I mean, they need to do a better job of a lot of things. But when it comes to this, this is a simple fix. It's just a little bit of a schedule tweak. I know they obviously like we kind of have a Rivals Week a little bit with interleague stuff like Yankees, Mets, Subway Series, things like that. But I think it would be cool. If you kind of made okay in when it, things are kind of slowing down, like it's first week of June, you know, mm. and people are starting to wane a little bit. It's like, hey, it's rivals week mm. and all the rivals are playing and now they're scheduled. Boom, 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 where, okay, all these games are going to be on TBS or whatever. And so you watch all those games back to back. You get to see Yankees, Red Sox. You get to see Cardinals. Cubs, you get to see, uh, you know, whatever Dodgers, Dodgers Giants. Giants. Yeah. yeah, you get to see all those marquee <laughs> matchups, and then it's just a lot more fun. I just they should do some things like that just to kind of gain some interest, especially when they see lulls and viewership and things like that. They can kind of just, hey, let's throw this in, throw this in, throw this in. These are good scheduling things. Um, I think yeah. that's something they can have fun with. Um, yeah. but we want to hear yours in the comment section. So this is going to be a segment we do again on Wednesday, but with your suggestions. So what are your MLB fixes? We want to hear them in the comment section. We're going to pull our best ones uh, that we get. Of course, we're going to react to your realistic ones. And we're also going to tell you our ridiculous ones next. We want to hear those too. That's when we come back. Happy Super Bowl to all who celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks, and placing some super bets. Now, personally, I love everything about Super Bowl Sunday. I go to my friend's house. We all make food. It's great. We watch the game. We rate the commercials and, of course, the halftime show. Now, personally, betting-wise, I love parlays. Those are always fun to make. And FanDuel has so many ways for you to end the season with a W or two or three. Not only can you bet on who will win the Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets for which players will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and so much more. New customers join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Back now on Locked On Yankees, our final segment and our ridiculous MLB rule changes. Let's start with Stacy. Uh, let's say that these are dumb, not real, and not things that are going to happen. Oh, Don't yeah. get mad at us. This will uh, never happen. But let, let's just go <laughs> ahead and rattle them off. Uh, what What are some of your ridiculous? Let's start with your first one. Eliminate the ghost runner in, uh, or you know, the extra run, whatever, whatever they call it, the uh, Manfred Man. Um, eliminate him in extra innings and have the two best batters on each team do a home run derby. Yeah, I feel, I feel like that's a fairly popular one. A fairly <laughs> pop, like I, I think that's not too outlandish. I've, I've seen that being floated online. Like people have definitely talked about that. Yeah. I don't think that would ever happen. But, no, no. Um, I'll one up you on that though, Stace. So. <laughs> 
baseball players of a certain age remember uh, types of bats fairly well. Uh, bats that are used in NCAA and below have to be certified by something called BB Core. BBCOR is the official whatever, whatever it means. But those are the bats that you have to use. Those are illegal. Anything outside of that is illegal. For a time, they used to be Beezers, B E S R. Beezer bats are like the early 2000s NCAA Mark Kotze style bats. The <laughs> You know, that oh. really loud ping bats. <laughs> yes. So I'm going to one up you. Not only do you get the extra inning home run derby, but you get metal bats. Not only metal bats, you get Beezer bats. So you get those ridiculous long home runs. So it's super, super fun. I mean, they're tired. You know, it's the middle of the summer. They're exhausted. Yeah. It's like, let's give them a little oomph. You know, let me get the extra 30 feet out of that bat. So, yeah, I say. Let's one up that home run derby. Give me the Beezer bats back. I don't think they make them anymore, but maybe, you know, you strike a deal with, you know, the bat companies and there you go. I'm just imagining Aaron, Aaron Judge hitting like 630 foot home runs. Yes. <laughs> yes. You think you're not tuning in on June 22nd uh, <laughs> to watch a Beezer bat home run derby between Aaron Judge and Ronald Acuna Jr.? Come on, man. You're watching yeah. that. Uh, what's your next one, Stace? I think there should be a designated runner for guys who are either bad at running the bases or are too unhealthy to run the bases, i.e. Giancarlo Stanton 2023. And not only are they allowed to um, run for him, but they can do it every time he's up. They don't replace him in the game. They just replace him on the bases and he's able to come up to bat again. Okay, so my question here is, is this only once that batter has reached base? Is this like the like how in um, softball does the designated player? Yes. Or can I one-up you again? Okay. Stanton, a right-handed bat. Do you have Oswald Peraza standing outside of the batter circle on the left-handed side while he's hitting, you know, just hanging out there? Hopefully a stray ball doesn't hit him. And as soon as Stanton <laughs> hits the ball, he just walks back to the dugout and Oswald takes off. No, I think it's once they get on base. Once they get on base. Yeah. Because I kind of want to see. My, I know that would be funny. I kind of want to see <laughs> just like little league style, just like, oh, well, he's going to run for him. Go, you know, and just you know, it's there's a danger factor. I see. Yeah. I mean, I especially see, with someone like factor, especially with someone like Stanton who hits the crap out of the ball. I mean, or how about this? Let's say it, it makes it a legitimate tactic of it to where. They have to stand in a designated spot that's like well away from the area. So it's a longer run. Oh, so now yeah. there's a strategy to it. It's like how bad is Stanton at running to first? Is it worth putting Oswald in the on deck or uh, on base runner circle? <laughs> <laughs> to where now he takes off and it's 100 feet instead of 90. Mm. Ah, see, mm. there you go. Strategy. Yeah. That could be interesting. Um, <laughs> Stacy, I've talked about the free sub on this show, but it bears repeating. This is my this is my big wild pitch to baseball to make baseball more exciting. And if you haven't heard me talk about my free sub idea, let me implore this to you. The free sub, you can put anybody in at any time, even if they're currently playing, even if they're currently on base. You want to see Aaron Judge hit back-to-back -back homers by himself? Have at it. The second judge touches home, he picks his bat back up and he goes right back into the uh, uh, into the box. You could do that once per game at any time. You don't get an extra run, an extra innings past the ninth, but you do get the free sub at any point. It could be someone that's been pulled from the game as long as they're on the active roster. Feel free, man. If you think you have a chance to drive, you know, if, if you think that Anthony Volpe has a good chance to drive himself in, after doubling, then do it. <laughs> if you just saw Judge hit a homer and then three batters later, you're like, oh, first and second with nobody out. Let's get Judge back to the plate in the scenario again. The free sub. The free sub. Yeah, I like, had something sort of similar to that where they could just do lineups on the fly. So if you want to see the same guy bat first in the say like in the first inning, in the yes, second every inning, inning yeah. any, every inning, you can have him so bat a first. Resetting lineup every yeah. inning. Yeah. <laughs> I don't hate that. Stats, <laughs> totally screwed. Oh, yeah. And a catcher would never hit again. Right, right. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah.
But Unless I kind of like the idea happening. of the uh, lineup resetting itself in the next inning. Like, oh, I didn't like how that worked out. Let's start it over again. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Uh, Stacy, my last one here before we get out of here today. I'm going to flip a rule. You know how you're not allowed to throw your hat or throw your glove to stop a ball, right? It results in an automatic oh, like double. The, mm-hmm. Change it around. I think if you're good enough to take your glove off and throw your glove and you actually hit the ball, I think that counts as an out. <laughs> you, don't, you have any idea how hard that is to do? Yeah, that's not easy like, to if do. If you're running into the gap, Soto's running into right center field. The ball's rolling to the track. If he throws his glove and actually hits the ball, I think that counts as a fly out. And like, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it, keep it as a live ball, right? Hits it with his glove. That's a fly out. All I got to do is tag up. So it's, it just acts like a sack fly. Hmm. But if you were legit, like, if you think you're, you're gutsy enough to actually throw your glove and <laughs> actually hit the ball, like think of it like a home run, like you throw it up to try and rob it. If you actually time that, that's amazing. That's incredible. That's Sports Center top 10 right there. I think they should make that rule. Come on, let's do this. That would be funny. I would like to see guys throwing their gloves at the ball. Yeah, come on. Have fun with it. <laughs> like, would we that be even... all game or would it be? Oh, after... yeah. Let's all do game? Like, what are we doing? Yeah. Guys throwing their gloves all over the place would be mayhem. <laughs> Why not? I think it would be fun. Uh, but of course, like we said, Drop yours in the comment section. We're going to be reacting to your answers on Wednesday's show. So if you reply, if you go into our comment section and start commenting your real fixes and your ridiculous fixes. And the more ridiculous, the better. (laughs) Yes, yes. I want to hear some really, really weird ones. So let us know in the comment section. That's coming up on Wednesday's show. Of course, you can always text us too. Insiders, I want you to text you, uh, text us your answers as well. So uh, go ahead and and open that phone up right now. The Lockdown Yankees Insiders Club, 14-day free trial in the episode description. And that's going to do it for today's episode of Lockdown Yankees. I'm Steve Granato. And I'm Stacey Gotsoulias. We'll see you on Wednesday. 